Welcome. As always, I am delighted that you are here. Looking forward, I hope, to a few words about this week in our world, in our tradition, and to taking a break to breathe, a moment's respite from whatever may be occupying our minds and attention at this time. Of one thing I am quite sure, if what we are thinking about is important, it will, st it will still be there when we conclude. And if what might be bothering us is fairly insignificant, it will hopefully yield to more productive and even positive reflections. I have been thinking this week about joy, prompted, you may remember, by the commandment that we be altogether joyous during our festival of Sukkot. In fact, another way of referring to the holiday is by the Hebrew designation, Zman Simchatenu, or the time of our joy. What makes this particularly remarkable in my mind is that this is one of only a handful of instances in the Torah in which we are commanded an emotion rather than an action. Passover is identified as the time of our freedom because of the exodus from Egypt. And Shavuot is identified as the time of the giving of the Torah in that it commemorates the revelation at Mount Sinai. At the time of the High Holy Days, we are commanded to return, to reflect, and to repent. But the emotional state in which we might do these things is not specified. Even on Purim, when we are, even on Purim, we are commanded not to be joyous, but rather to become so inebriated that we cannot tell the difference between Mordechai and Haman. And now, this week, we conclude the fall marathon of holidays with Simchat Torah, joy in the Torah, or rejoicing in the Torah. The joy of the week of Sukkot culminates in the joy of concluding the Torah and beginning it all over again. I found this poem to be a meaningful depiction of the hope that Simchat Torah carries with it. It is, it is entitled Poem for Torah on Simchat Torah by Rabbi Jill Hausman. Each time, each time and each year, we read the ancient words, burrowing into the empty spaces between those words, feeling the wonder there, letting them sink into us as we become one with them, resting ever more deeply this year in each line, each phrase, each word, sinking into them and held mesmerized in their embrace, the profound expansive meanings washing over us, in us and through us, giving us a new glimmer of understanding, speaking to us of our ancient selves and the life of our present heart. This year, may more of their secrets be unlocked. This year, may we fall into them and be caught there enveloped by their cosmic wisdom, held more deeply than ever before. So let us pause here for a moment to breathe with some of these images, some of these ideas in our minds. Let us assume our meditative postures. I'm, I always like to be a little bit forward in my chair sometimes depending on the chair, it may be more comfortable to, to sit in it completely. But whatever, however, wherever we place ourselves, let us plant our feet firmly on the ground. Allow our hands to rest openly in our laps. And as we let go of whatever we might be holding on to with our hands, let us let go of whatever we might be holding on to with our jaws, our necks, our shoulders, our arms, stomachs, torsos, 
our legs, our feet, all the way to the toes. Let's wiggle them just to allow them a little bit of life in the course of the day. And let us close our eyes if that is comfortable or just softly gaze unfocused into the distance. And take that first breath. Oh my. What makes it the first one is that it is deeper, fuller, more complete than when we, we are not paying attention. And we focus on it. It's what we're thinking about. Just filling up, filling up deeply and fully and healingly, comfortingly. This is the breath of life. Most of the time we pay no attention to it, thank goodness. Most of the time we can just take it for granted. But for our purposes, it allows us to focus right here, right now nowhere else. This is where we are taking this breath into our bodies right here, right now. And we might hold it for a few seconds. And then let it go. Either all at once or little by little whatever feels right to you. We do it again. And we notice how it feels, how our body feels around it or filled up with it or vitalized, energized by it. And we let it out again, maybe differently than before, maybe exactly the same way. And as we breathe in, we might imagine ourselves falling deeply into the words of Torah, falling deeply into wisdom. held right now by the embrace of our tradition, the solidity, the assurance, the perspective the confidence that our lives, our labors have meaning. They resonate with all of the activities of every generation of Jews before and after us because they are all present right here, right now, in this moment, in this next inhalation. Each of us is part of this ongoing continuum what is called the chain of our tradition. I'm not sure I always like the word chain, but I do like the idea of a continuum that is never broken because each of us feels as if we are falling into the wisdom of Torah, as if we are embraced always by something beyond us, greater than us, and yet of us simultaneously. We are embraced by a mystery. And that never changes.
I think I understand why Sukkot would signal a season of joy in the release from the high holy days, in the harvest it celebrates, in the daily realization of life's challenges and blessings. But what of the commandment to be altogether joyful? Why do we need that decree, that law, to be joyful? Is it even possible to obey? My reflections made me think of the 19th century Hasidic rabbi, Nachman of Bratslav, who suffered from depression, but nevertheless told us it is forbidden to despair and recommended any number of strategies, including dancing with a dish towel in the kitchen, doing silly things and occupying our thoughts with happy associations to avoid giving in to despair. Clearly, Nachman thought of being joyful as an act of will. For him, it was, and was also essential to his well being. In addition to wondering if a state of joy may be induced by an act of will, I am also wondering about the nature of our religious lives. Among the vast majority of Jews, who are largely non-observant. The one day of the year they will not miss being in synagogue is Yom Kippur. As Rabbi Irving Greenberg observes in his book, The Jewish Way, this is a day, Yom Kippur, is a day of deprivation and denial, of guilt and self-flagellation. If Yom Kippur is their only contact with Judaism, one can only say, what kind of devotion keeps people coming back year after year to a service that is long, exhausting, and solemn? He continues, Russian Jews, totally cut off from the tradition, had to rediscover Judaism or die. They chose life with profound and prophetic understanding. They chose to rediscover Simchat Torah first. What a way to recapture a religion in song, in dance, with or without understanding, with or without the words, in the union of generations, in the voices of children blessing the Torah, in the love of adults blessing the children. It is a model way for all to rediscover the Torah. Whoever has not seen the Simchat Beit HaShoeva, the rejoicing of the water drawing, which was an ancient practice that we know very little about. It did not stay in our calendar of, of observances. At any rate, so he says, whoever has not seen the Simchat, he quotes, uh, whoever has not seen the Simchat Beit HaShoeva, the rejoicing of the water drawing, has not seen real joy in life, says the Talmud. The contemporary synagogue too often skimps on the heritage of uncontrolled elation. Could there be an experience that more profoundly unifies the generations than the rediscovery of how the family can celebrate together of dance and joy in the house of sacredness? of nature for city dwellers, of religious purpose for the jaded, of concern for fellow Jews worldwide. Perhaps we need the commandment because it is easier to be serious, to be solemn, to be negative. Our tradition does not usually instruct us to do things that come easily, naturally, or instinctively. How often do we find ourselves reacting or responding negatively when if we would only take a deep breath or pause a beat before replying, we might respond from a more positive place, a place as Reb Nachman suggests that might uplift our own spirits as well as those of others. 
I don't know what the psychological mechanism is or if there even is one, but it seems to me that no is an easier response than yes. It is why I appreciate meditation so much. Even pausing briefly to breathe, to release, to focus on the here and now allows us to reset, to recalibrate, to regroup, and to renew our outlook and our attitude. We seem to need reminders to celebrate the blessings of our lives and not just focus on the constant challenges. It also seems that our tradition is quite wise in its concern for our emotional health. Five days after Yom Kippur, we are commanded to be joyous, to be altogether joyful. And we are given seven days of Sukkot and one more of Simchat Torah to find any number of reasons to help us observe the command to find the light in our lives. Even mourning for a loved one is suspended during the festivals as the joy we are instructed to feel goes beyond our personal circumstances and connects us to something larger than we are that is beyond ourselves and our parochial concerns. It is a joy that is always available to us if we can exert the will and be available to the stimuli for delight that are around us, including the symbolism and meaning of our sacred festivals. I found the following reading from a rabbinic text entitled Likute Sichot to be both helpful and evocative of our Simchat Torah celebration. It is entitled Dancing with Feet. On Simchat Torah, we dance with our feet, not with our heads. We are celebrating the Torah, and the Torah is something we study with our heads. But we dance with our feet, not with our heads. If we would dance with our heads, each one would dance a different dance, each in a different space, some with friends, but not with others, some as lonesome souls. One head is higher, one is lower, one is here on earth, the other in the clouds or beyond. And some minds know only their own space that no one else can know. But we dance with our feet and all our feet are here on the same earth, none higher and none lower. So now we can all dance as one with one heart as a single being. Now there is no loneliness, only joy. Let us continue to breathe for a few, moment, few more moments. We might imagine that joy dancing inside of us. We might imagine our feet Moving, moving to music, moving in a communal way. Even right now, we are dancing with generations who have, with the generations who have preceded us, who are with us, with the generations that will follow, that are with us with our own generation, with all the Jews in this world. We dance with our feet, with our humanity, with our common humanity. And we partake of a joy that is available to that same humanity.
and we think how the Torah has brought such joy to so many generations of our people as it continues to do every day. Such a wonderful image, dancing with our feet, with that part of us that meets every other human being on the same ground. I hope you will continue to breathe now, tomorrow, later in the week. By way of conclusion, and to set an intention for this coming week, I would conclude with this poem entitled, When the Holidays Have Ended, A Blessing for the Return to Everyday Life by Devin Spear. After the holidays have ended, what is there to gaze upon? And what is there to praise? When the last word is uttered and the last song is sung, are we to be numbed by the ordinary? or open to something extraordinary still. As we prepare to take in the rounds of our joy, let us remember the circles of our days and that every beginning, ending, enduring, contains the power and the glory and the journey to return us to the greatest source we have been given the blessed possibility of being alive. May you access this joy in the days to come and beyond through a recollection of this time of year, through an act of will, through an opportunity to learn to sink into the words of Torah, or even less specifically, to sink into the embrace of our tradition. God bless. See you next time.